First thing I'll say about a question like this is if geometry is your weakness, you can skip this for now and you can leave this and go and do some other things. And, and maybe, you know, if you don't run out, if you run out of time, you just guess randomly on this. That's okay. You got to start making decisions about what you're going to spend your time on, what's most likely going to get you right answers. So they do talk about a cone and a cone, a uh, right circular cone is a volume of this. Uh, and the area of its base is this other thing. What is the slant height in centimeters of the cone? So what we mostly need for the cone here is the volume formula, but you don't have to memorize that. That's in the reference chart that they give you. You maybe just gotta remember what a cone is. It's this guy. So our volume is one third pi r squared h. So just to be careful though, when they say what is the slant height, slant height, that means something different than this height. This is just the normal height of the cone. The slant height is this right here, kind of like the angled version of it. So that's really what our what we're kind of looking for here. That's our, our x or whatever you want to think of. So uh, I'm going to bring the formula over, right? So the volume is one third pi r squared h. So um, at first, I would just kind of plug points in equations. I have the volume is 71, 148 pi, one third pi r squared h. So uh, I need to find um, the, the radius here. Because uh, eventually I want kind of some heights, but I don't have either the radius or the height. But because I have the uh, area of its base, I have a little bit of an advantage in getting the radius because the area of the base is pi r squared also in the reference chart because it's a circle, right? That's what a cone's base is, it's a circle. So pi r squared h, so we can just do another plug, uh, or pi r squared, so we can just do another um, plug points and equations, 5, 9, 2, 9, pi is equal to pi r squared, so those pi's go, and we can take the square root of both. I'm gonna do that in my regular old calculator. So five, nine, two, nine, square root is 77. So uh, 77 is my radius, so I can plug that in right there. So seven, one, one, four, eight, pi equals one third pi, 77 squared h. So. I am going to solve for a height. It is not the final height, but it looks like just based on what they gave me, I've got to find that along the way. So, okay. Um, this is kind of where it gets kind of messy, uh, depending on how you want to deal with that fraction. Um, let's do 77. Is that a prime number? No, but it doesn't have threes in it. So let's get rid of the, the let's get rid of that third first. That's going to be annoying. So we multiply by three. That's going to cancel this out, but we got to do Seven one one four eight times three is two one three four four four. Let's get rid of those pies while we're at it. Uh, we did seventy seven squared before. That's five nine two nine, and now we can divide by five nine two nine five nine two nine, and we get h is nine two nine thirty six. And unsurprisingly, that's an answer, right? But that's a trap. So uh, we need to get the slant height. So let's kind of come down here now and let's, um, oh, actually, let's just use the picture they gave us, right? So how do we think about the slant height? Well, you might recognize that the shape I have now drawn is a right triangle. And so we have two of the three parts. We have the radius, which is the base, the height, which is the height. And we're looking basically for the hypotenuse of that thing. So it's going to be a little bit of this formula, Pythagorean theorem, right? So the radius we said was... 77, um, so that's down here. And we said the height was 36, yep, right? So that's this. And we are looking for C, that's gonna be our thing. So let's just do it, so that's gonna be uh, 36 squared plus 77 squared is equal to uh, C squared. I'm gonna go in here now and do it in Desmos because I like the way it kind of works out here. So I'm gonna do the square root and kind of preempt things of 36 squared plus 77 squared, and I get 85. And uh, I kind of could have skipped that step because if you think about it, if I had a right triangle and I knew that 77 was one of the legs of that right triangle, I know by the laws of right triangles that the hypotenuse has to be bigger than either of the legs. The, lo the longest side of a, of a right triangle is always the hypotenuse. And just based on the fact that there's multiple choice, the only thing longer than that leg, that radius, is 85. So cross elimination, it has to be that. But 
you know, if it was a student produced response question, we had to type it in, then we would need to know how to do the Pythagorean theorem. And, and that's not that surprising. Right triangles make an appearance in all sorts of geometry questions. So it's usually a good way to go. But that slant height thing, if that's the reason you got it wrong, you didn't know what that meant, then that sucks. But now you do, and you won't get it wrong again. Uh, it's not common the SAT asks about that, but also just remember things like cones, spheres, cylinders, all these formulas are given to you on the reference chart. So you don't have to memorize that. You just need to memorize that the reference chart exists. And there you go.